Hello, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Now this is gonna be the second episode on the Turbo Lamech install into the E90 with an 8HP70. As I mentioned in the intro, the Turbo Lamech becomes an external transmission control unit, or basically the computer for the transmission, but it's all external. So what we need to do is actually remove the computer that's inside these boxes and directly link it up to the external, or link up the solenoids to the external controller. Now to do that, we've actually got to take the mechatronics unit out and literally cut the computer out and solder some things in. It doesn't look too complicated, I've never done it before, so that's what we're gonna do in this video. Now, first step of the process is make sure you get all the oil out. Uh, when I did my DCT conversion, I managed to forget that and then made a big mess. Uh, what I'm gonna do is somehow get the transmission onto that bit of cardboard on its side, and we will take the pan off and see if we can get the mechatronics unit out. Shouldn't make too much of a mess. Oh, the oil, the transmission fluid. Okay, guys, so we've got it upside down. Well, sort of upside down and before I sit on a load of fluid on this stool. Okay, so I did actually drain it out of the side plug, or the fill plug, I should say, and the main drain. Um, it's gonna make a mess, it is what it is. Let's get this pan off. Now, I've never actually taken a ZF8 pan off, so let's see what they look like inside. Luckily, they don't have 57 bolts like a ZF6. They do have different size bolts, though. What's going on here? No, they don't. They have goop in the bolts on the pan. Otherwise, they are a T40 pan bolt. I wonder if the wreckers put that green stuff in there. It makes it hard to get the torque spit in. Although you'd think they'd want you to service it if they want to give you a warranty. Anyway, anyway. Enough chit chat. Let's get this sucker off. All right. <clears throat> now this is where it gets extra oily. Hmm. Hey, it come off pretty easy. The inside of that pan looks pretty damn clean. Not a lot of metal compared to when you strip down a 6 HP. Mind you, this box is supposed to be pretty fresh. I think it's only supposed to have done about 40,000 Ks. So now we are looking at the mechatronics unit. Uh, again, I've not taken one of these off before. Um, I probably should have looked at some guides. Just in case anybody is wondering, this here is an accumulator which is used for stop start or vehicles with stop start. So it keeps hydraulic pressure in the transmission when the engine turns off. What I might do is just start undoing it and we'll see what comes off. Okay, so we unplug that, and with the six HPs, the bolts that actually hold the mechatronics to the body of the transmission, they're a bigger bolt, so you can visually see they're different. Uh, I'm just gonna undo those, and we'll see if it pulls away. Now there is obviously a proper sequence to undo these, and you probably shouldn't do it with a rattle gun, but hey, YOLO. All right, my guess is the accumulator does need to come out. It's got the big bolts on it. Slightly different size big bolts. Let's see if that then lifts up. Oh, oh, oil, oil everywhere. Okay, huh, interesting. Yeah, and there's some hidden bolts down there that are holding the mechatronics on. I reckon she's coming off. Sounded horrible. And something grabbed. What do we just do? Okay, so we got there in the end. Uh, one thing I did do, I forgot to do, which I didn't realize I had to do, is just that lever there which holds the uh, connector into the outlet just there and that is the first time I've seen the inside of an 8HP Oof. to be fair it looks pretty similar to a 6HP got some extra shit going on at the back what we want is the mechatronics and what we actually want is the TCU which is this section at the top all right let me 
work out how to get that off. All right, so I think all I'm going to do, you can actually see the bolts on this side that we're going to undo. Um, one thing that is concerning me is that wire. That plug I know. So if I can do this, aha, yeah, the plug is off. Okay, so that wiring can stay can stay behind. All right, I better get a Torx bit and we'll undo the bolts that go through to the TCM. Now I would do this on the bench, but it just makes so much mess. I'm gonna struggle on the floor until we get the TCM off and try and keep all the oily bits away from where we're gonna be working for the main part of the video. Um, all right, I think I've worked out the bolts. So I'm just gonna crack them off. You got that bolt there. So I think that's now loose. Alright, we are coming off. Okay, let's lay that down. And it's oily mess, and we have one TCM. All right, I'm gonna get this cleaned up with some brake clean, so we're not getting this oil everywhere. And I'll see you on the bench. All right, so there we go, we have the TCM here. Um, please keep in mind, this is the first time I've done one of these, so it's not gonna be the best tutorial or guide ever. But the point of what we're doing here is basically connecting the pins in the main connector directly to all of the solenoids and then the speed sensors and all that sort of stuff. So we're basically just trying to bypass this factory TCU, which is just here. Now, Turbo Lamech, he actually does this with just bridging wires. So the way that he does it, he actually removes the TCU completely. So he removes this section here, that section there, the, uh, the brown across the top there, and actually manages to cut the TCU out from this side and pop it out. Um, I'll put a link to the, the Turbo Lamech way of doing this and it works absolutely fine. However, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I've purchased one of these Ryutech PCB boards. Uh, I did that just because it saves putting wire, running a bit wire and I think it's gonna be a little bit quicker and these are currently only about 50 or 60 Australian dollars at the moment so it seems like a bit of a bargain. And which way up does it go? Actually gonna go that way. Um, you can't actually see it here but maybe if you can imagine. So we've got the plug on that side here and then you can just sort of just about trace the wires as they come in through the plug and it'll go that way up. So now we'll flip it back over. And then all this does is just bridge the plug to, well, basically the solenoid connections which run along the top here. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, and it works that way. So the way to do it, and I'll put a link to the Ryotech video as well. Um, the Ryotech also, you don't need to dis disassemble so much of this. But basically what I'm gonna try and do now is get this black section off. I've got my trusty little Dremel, so I'm going to basically Dremel away these little uh, plastic welded rivets. There's two brown ones there, and then these two black ones there, and then we'll see if we can get that cover off. So that probably looked pretty messy on the time lapse, but I wasn't sure which clips you needed to undo after drilling out the rivets. But just to confirm, you need to drill out the two black rivets there, and then the two brown rivets there. And then the clips, there's one clip there, 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 there. That actually just holds the wiring harness, so don't worry about that. But that clip there, that clip there, that clip there, and that clip there. Uh, and then that little piece slides off, and you're left with this. And this is the part that we need to cut open. So, this is where it could get all messed up. My little Ryotech board needs to sit in there. The issue or the dangerous part that I have to kind of work out how I'm gonna do it is if we cut too deep into this section, uh, it will damage the pins. So I need to cut, basically cut the top off and not go too far in. Let me see if I can work out a safe way to do it. All right, all I'm gonna do, I know that there's, there's nothing actually down this end of the TCU, so we'll start cutting there. We'll see how it cuts. 
Um, I know Ryotech put a... He drew on his cutting disc, but I, mean, I don't see what difference it makes. You can see how deep you've gone in. All right, let's see how we go. I know you guys probably can't see much. Well, that's terrible. test cuts not too bad all right i'm gonna switch you over to time lapse and i'm just gonna cut all the way around Okay, now I should add, this is the first time I've used a cutoff wheel ever, and the first time I've used a Dremel ever. And I was super nervous, and I tried to cut it quite high, and I think we've managed to completely avoid anything of any importance. So the issue, and the reason I was trying to be super, super safe there, is if you Dremel the top of any of these contact pads, it will be a problem. So I've probably gone a bit high, but now I know we're all safe, I can actually just tidy up that top surface, which I'll do now. It's actually quite soft metal. I could have probably just done it even quicker with a file. Somebody needs to invent like a, um, a can opener that we can use to do this, because it'll be a lot quicker than trying to Dremel it. Yeah, this metal is, it's pretty soft. I probably took way too much care uh, in, yeah, it just peels off. Yeah, I probably took way too much care in actually um, cutting that top off. But we are now off and we have access to, I want to say PCB, but it's not PCB. It is an actual TCU. That there is the transmission control unit for these cars. Doesn't look like a lot there. All right, I'm just going to vacuum this up. Two seconds. Okay, I've just given this a bit of a, a wash down with brake clean, which is why it looks a bit better. And I've also just cleaned up the edges a bit so we haven't got too many super sharp bits to annoy me. Um, interestingly, you can clearly see, and I'll try and overlay some footage, the gap between the casing and the insulated part of each pin. Um, yeah, it's, I'm still, I'm really blown away with how small the TCU is. Like, can I compare it to? BMW key. That is the entire transmission control unit for an, an 8 HP. That's got all the maps, all the security, all the settings, areas, there's a lot of stuff going on. Also the brake clean or whatever this stuff is, I didn't actually touch it before but it, it's quite soft. Interesting. So Ryu Tech who supply these boards, they actually break these uh, pins off with uh, a razor blade. I'm just going to try it with this little prong. Now they are spot welded quite well. Okay, we are going to need a blade. Let me get a blade. I have a blade here actually. We'll see if this is going to do it. Okay, that comes off. All right, all right. I'm going to go around. We're going to pull all of these wires off that connect the TCU to all the pins and hopefully you've worked out what's going on here so you can see that board there that is the plug that comes from the car it connects to all these points and then it goes basically over to here and over to here for sensors and solenoids seems pretty easy the Ryotech's even got the boards to tell you what all the pins are all right going back to time lapse i'm gonna crank the music up and we'll get all those pulled off Okay, so that's all of them broken off. Um, I had to get a sharper razor blade. This one was a bit crappy, but yeah, I've just 
bent it a little bit and it managed to pry them off pretty good. The tops of all the pads are actually smooth. There's a couple of scratches on them, but I don't think it's gonna matter. So this is the Ryutech. It sits in. A little bit of movement, but not much. And now it's just a matter of soldering the pads to there. What I might just do, I'm just gonna give it a quick clean with some brake clean. Um, I'm not a good solderist, so don't copy me on the soldering, but let me see if I can get it soldered. And then we're nearly done. I thought I better just make a note of it. There was a small piece of metal. I don't know if it was an off cut from when I've done that or whatever, but it was tucked in there. If you have anything shorting out between a pin and the, and the body of the, the original TCU, it will cause issues with the Lamech. Um, and it could be irreversible if you get that wrong. So make sure before you actually solder it on that everything in here is cleaned perfectly. There's no bits of metal or anything that could cause it to short out. Top tip, just in case. I figured I'd film the first one. So we're all cleaned off, but everything's clean. The board is clean. The TCU is clean. And I'm not sure how it's gonna solder. Um, I got a bit of rosin or resin, whatever the hell it's called, a bit of flux anyway. Just see if we can do those three there. Um, I have nothing but the cheapest solder available because why would you rock anything else? And I've basically just got this soldering iron cranked to the max. Sweet. Just clean the tip off a bit. We'll try again. I don't know where this solder come from. I feel like we've had it for a while. Mm, it's a bit better. Okay. Frozen is going everywhere. Okay. The PCB has taken the solder much better than... Okay. That worked. That wasn't too bad. So the PCB seems to absorb, like, want to want to stick to the solder more than the, the pin, but we'll just see. Check that one. I feel like solder ran down. Hmm. I got a bit too much flux on it. <sighs> hmm. What's got me nervous? The solder is going down. I think the solder is running underneath the PCB. So I might just have a little bit of a refresh on that and make sure we're not causing a problem underneath. That is a concern. Again, if we short it out underneath, we will have a problem. Let me just get a solder sucker. So, just for the sake of getting it right, all right, no, the solder had not ran down under the pin. So I was worried over nothing. How typical. All right, I'm gonna switch over to time-lapse. I'm gonna get it all soldered up and I'll show you when it's all done. No! 
It was all going too smoothly, wasn't it? I thought I'd show you guys the fuck up so that you guys can avoid doing the same mistake. The soldering iron I am using is a 480 watt desktop soldering station soldering iron. And I could sort of tell we weren't getting enough heat into it. And as it's come down this side, yeah, just not enough heat in it. And the solder stuck to the side of the TCU, which is a problem. And I can't get it out. I can't get enough heat in it to desolder it, which is really shit. So I tried with the gas soldering iron. If I'd have just done it with this to start with, it probably would have been fine. So if you've got a normal automotive gas soldering iron, you'll be pretty safe. These things get hotter than shitty 480 watt soldering irons. And I know it's 480 watt, but the second you touch something, it just sucks the heat out of it. So it doesn't maintain heat very well. Just a cheap soldering iron. It's fine for circuit boards. Um, this is definitely better for holding a bit of heat in, especially with a big tip, but still not enough heat. So I've got to bring out the big guns, um, see if I can get that out and suck it out. Well, it's been a fun 24 hours. Um, if you couldn't tell with that lovely little edit that I've just put together, I cocked up. I cocked up big time. Um, and when I, when I was filming that last section that you'd seen, I didn't realize how much of an issue um, I'd just caused for myself. Basically, the outer edge, this little part here, I think this works as a bit of a heat sink for the factory ECU. Um, now I've only worked that out because as I've been doing all the soldering, this part actually gets quite hot. There's a lot, of, it must be a thicker piece and obviously that is what the factory TCU is stuck to. And it must, it, that must be how they cool the factory ECU. Obviously it's gonna get quite warm in the gearbox. Um, and that little blob of solder, that little blob of solder that just stuck to the side in that last little time lapse that you've seen, which was minuscule. It was such a small little amount of solder. Um, that's happened because the cheap iron that I'm using here, it's just not hot enough to deal with these pads. Now the pads are actually insulated from the heat sink, but the way that I was doing it, and you might be able to see in the time lapse, although I know the GoPro is not great, I'd sort of work on one side of the blob and then sort of move the heat over and then I'm moving backwards and forwards with the heat to try and get it to stick. Uh, and as you can see there, a lot of these are, they're not the right color for solder. And these were all, these have now all been redone with the gas soldering iron. So even that was sort of struggling to get enough heat into the board um, or into the, into the pins. Now, unfortunately after, th best part of three hours of trying to get that solder out, um, it was a fail. I could not get enough heat into it. And I was using the Big Daddy 300 watt soldering iron. Like this thing is huge, but I couldn't get enough heat to actually use a solder sucker or the wick solder stuff. I couldn't get enough heat into it. Um, now, I know I was saying at the start of this video, I'm not a professional solderer. Um, the only sort of real soldering jobs I do lately, other than joining the occasional wire together, is uh, like PCB work for EEPROM reading, um, which is all very super fine, nothing needs to be hot, and that soldering iron works fine, and so does my solder. Um, the solder that I was using yesterday, I started off, I think I've managed, oh, here it is. Um, this come from JCAR, I think. It's old, like I feel like we've had this for like 10 years. Uh, that's what I was using at first, it wasn't great. Then I switched over to some newer stuff, which I can't remember how I got this, but it was supposed to be like recommended as okay to use solder. It's it's no good for this. It's fine on the EEPROMs that I'm doing. And with the EEPROMs and the CAS modules, you just need to join very, very thin wires with a very small amount of solder to a PCB, and then you pull it off. Um, this works fine for that, but it would not work for this big sort of where you've got a fair bit of solder and you've got a fair bit of heat getting sucked away. I ended up going back to this solder, which come free with a soldering iron, and I've had people tell me this stuff's crap, but that worked the best. And that's how I've managed to fix everything. I bet if I just started with that and probably that iron, we would have been fine. But my God, if you're gonna do the Ryotech install, do not get any solder on the edges because getting it off is a nightmare. Yeah, like I've got solder sucker, Turns out I'm the sucker in this case. Um, anyway, basically long story short, after all the, the trying to get the solder out, I ended up having to actually grind it out of the groove here, which has made a big mess of everything, and then chip it away. Just, yeah, you can see we've like melted this. So I had the blow torch on it. I had, this thing was hot, but not hot enough to melt the solder to pull it out with either the wick or the sucker. Hey, 
I really don't want to show everyone how bad I messed that up, but hopefully it saves somebody else a lot of drama. So if you're going to be soldering these, just take your time. Don't rush it like I did. I thought these are huge contact pads, and compared to the EEPROMs that I'm normally soldering, which are like a fraction of a millimeter, this seems super easy, and I managed to cock it up because I'm not paying enough attention. Um, how I've managed to fix it, and I think I fixed it, and we're going to go and do a test with the TCU shortly. Um, I actually had to remove, so we ended up with four prongs, because of all the messing, that were actually shorting out to the body. Um, these prongs are basically these little bits here. They are, like I said, they are insulated from the body, but basically these four were all shorting out, so I ended up removing them. Uh, they are pulled out completely, and I've replaced them with little bits of wire. Now that is PTFE, it's a really good wire that I'm using. Um, but yeah, basically just pulled the prongs out, drilled through, and now they are directly connected on the back there. I know it looks messy, but I wanted to be sure that we've got very, very good connection. So I'd rather just overheat it, nearly melt everything, and just make sure the solder is connected. Um, I've been doing resistance testing with the multimeter, and every pin is connected to every point on here that it should be. So I think we're safe. We should pass the test when we test the LAMEC shortly. Um, but yeah, the reason I kept going with the Ryotech, this to me, I think, is still an easier option. I was super worried about actually dremeling off the top of the case. That was easy. And this would have been done literally in probably two hours if I didn't mess up with that solder. But messing up the solder has turned it into a 12-hour job. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was trying for ages to remove the solder. Um, I wasn't sure if you could remove the pins. Turns out you can just remove the pins. So I have removed the pins, drilled them out. And on this side, please keep in mind, I know it looks messy. There is more solder there than needs to be, but I, I want to make sure we've got a good connection. Um, it's these connectors here that Lamech actually uses when he joins them up. So he pops those two covers off and then just joins wires across as required. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show this way because I have got some potting mix Potting mix, that sounds terrible. Potting compound, potting epoxy, that we will be sealing all of this in once I'm confident that it is definitely gonna work and transfer electricity like it should. I started to get a bit concerned, but I have basically got four bits of wire in there. And this wire is, it was quite expensive wire. It's what I use for the coils. It's quite thick. It does conduct fairly damn well. Um, it's got thin insulation, but it's all good stuff. I'm sure it's gonna transfer enough current to the solenoids that we need it to transfer. We're getting zero resistance with a multimeter, so it should be good. Man, I hope you guys enjoy my pain, because we had some pain for one second lapse of con concentration and just rushing things. Yeah, that was a big mistake, so don't make that mistake. Take your time and get a good soldering iron. Uh, if I was gonna do another one of these, which I probably will, in fact, I might, in the interest of showing you guys how to do it properly, uh, I've got another um, ZF8 on the floor over there. I'll order another Ryotech, and I might go to my brother-in-law, who is a professional solderist, and get his proper instructions on how to do this job. Um, yeah, I was trying to say throughout the whole video, not good with solder. I know how to do what I've done before, but yeah, this one caught me out. Anyway, uh, let's get it hooked up to the turbo alignment controller and we'll see if we get any error codes. To do the test, I do need to uh, connect the TCU back up to the mechatronics, but the mechatronics doesn't need to be in the transmission. It just needs basically an electrical connection to the solenoids. I'll see you guys in a second. Right, this is the moment of truth. Um, just so you guys know what's going on. I have my, that's actually the kit that I use for reprogramming CAS modules and it comes with a 6HP connector to virginize electronic or locked 6 HPs. Um, so I managed to plug the 6 HP connector into the LAMIC harness, and that'll actually power the harness, which is how the LAMIC controller is powered in the vehicle. Uh, something that will be different, obviously we're not getting a ton of current uh, through this setup, but it's fine for programming, so I'm hoping it's gonna be working for this. Um, I'm gonna film the turning on, just in case, in case it lets the smoke out, at least we've got it on footage, um, but, what we want to do is see what error codes we get. Now, we're going to get some error codes. I will put on the screen what these error codes are. But the first 11 are the connection to the solenoids, and that's what I'm kind of worried about. So error codes 1 to number 11, we don't want to see. And then I'm not sure how many of these other ones are going to work. Like, no RPM signal from the gear speed sensor, no RPM signal from the engine. Obviously, that stuff's not going to work because it's not connected. So let's turn it on and see what we get on the display. Ooh, please don't smoke. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. I've checked and checked and checked. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine, let's see. That's powered up. 
It's in park. The oil is 25 degrees. We've got code number 20, code number 13, code number 20, code 33. So it's 13, 20, and 33. 13, 20, 33. 13, 20, 33. What is code 13? Code 13 is not on the sheet. Interesting. Code 20 is open circuit or short to ground of the gearbox speed sensor pin 72. So that is an error. Damn it. Okay, I did make a small mistake. Code 20? Yeah, it is. Unless it's got something to do Have to check that. Okay, and code 33 is can to error no message. Now that could be because I haven't got the shifter plugged in. All right, let me see if I can work out what code 20 is. Open circuit or short to ground of the gearbox speed sensor one, pin 72. Okay, oh, well we got there in the end. So it turns out the harness that I was using for my bench well, from my bench setup, it only uses one of the earth points on the standard 6HP connector, where the Lamech requires two earth. There are two earth wires. So I've made a, I've just cut up an old 6AT connector. It's now plugged into the Lamech. So I've got the, basically the constant power, the 15 wake up, which is the normal BMW way of like ignition on. Um, so they're positive and we've got the two grounds. And now when we turn it on, no smoke, oil's still 25, and the errors, error 33. It also makes noise now, which I think is a solenoid pulsing, but we only have error 33, and I'm just gonna change mode, see if that works. Oh, it does. Hope the GoPro's picking it up, but yeah. So, the errors I was getting yesterday, I think were just because we didn't have all the earths connected. Probably should have checked that. Um, I figured it'd be safe using the test bench harness that I normally use, but I wasn't really sure. I did also hook up uh, Tuna Pro to the Lamech yesterday, trying to work out what was going on. It did take me a little while to work all this out. Um, and it's actually really good, all the settings and options you've got in Tuna Pro. If you'd like to see a video on the Lamech Tuna Pro suite, let me know. I, I'm still I'm blown away with how much work's got into that. Uh, I'll probably do it on test and tune, though, as a separate video. But for now, <sighs> my dodgy soldering works. So... Pretty crappy video because of my soldering mess up. Um, and I think I did mention it, I'll probably do another video and I'll get somebody's proper advice on how to solder these particular things. But my guess is a slightly better quality soldering iron and better quality solder and it'll be pretty easy. Right, I'm gonna end off. I'm actually gonna head up right now and get the torque converter modified uh, because that is something that we've got to do as the spider's jumping everywhere. Um, but I'll talk about that in another video. It's relatively easy to do and hopefully won't cost too much money. Guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I almost forgot and I will film when I do the epoxy filling of the PCB as well. The reason we need to do the epoxy on this is the chance of uh, shorting out with metal debris in the oil with the case. Uh, when Lamech does his wire only conversion, he doesn't actually epoxy anything. So that is one downside of using the Ryotech. You do need to use epoxy afterwards, where if you just do the wire solder job that Lamech recommends, or not recommend, but the one that they do, uh, you don't need the epoxy. Nothing shorts out. Anyway, peace.